How's it going everybody? You probably saw a previous video that I made about my garage here, the one here behind me, the uh, King Electric Heater, the Eco 2S model. You're probably wondering how much does it cost to run and uh, maybe how loud is it? I wanted to address a couple of those concerns and maybe tell you, does it still work electric? LP, that'd be better. Uh, natural gas isn't an option for me since I don't have it nearby. So let's take a look at some numbers and we'll go from there. So I just got my monthly electric bill. And uh, you're probably wondering, wow, this thing probably cost me an arm and a leg to run. Well, my garage is insulated pretty well. I have R30 in the ceiling and R13 in the walls. And really, um, besides the garage door, it's all sealed up pretty well. I have weather stripping around the garage door and it's an R8 garage door insulation value. So you got my electric bill comparing last year versus this year. And there's a few different variables I can't control. But giving you actual numbers to numbers, it looks like I'm seeing about a 250 kilowatt usage increase over a month's span. Um, and if you look at your electrical bill, it's gonna tell you how much it costs per kilowatt hour. Sometimes it'll be multi-staged and it'll sometimes have a rate on how the transmission to your house. Each individual co company is gonna be a little different. Um, if you look at ours all in, um, even at the most expensive rate, my electrical is tiered. So I'll have a tier one, tier two, step one, step two. Um, step one is up to so many kilowatt hours and step two is up to so many kilowatt hours and it's charges more or less. So for the sake of the argument, we'll take my most expensive, which is 13 cents per kilowatt hour. And so if we do some simple math here, let's pull the old phone out. So if we do some simple math, so 250 kilowatt hours at 13 cents, it cost me $32.50. Well, that's a roundabout, right? And that 13 cents, like I mentioned, is including in my specific instance, um, not just energy cost. It's like 10 cents for step one, whatever, and like eight cents for step two, but then you have your transmission fees they charge you. 13 cents is on the expensive piece here, so we'll go with that. And so right around 33 bucks it cost me per month, at least this last month, to heat the garage. Um, at night, we've been seeing, we saw a couple of days there where it was, it was negative 10 with the uh, wind chill and such. Um, but most most days have been you know mid 20s and then lower teens to single digits at night. Um, so keeping the garage here at 45 degrees, it cost me about 33 dollars we'll say compared to last year, which I didn't I didn't really run much last year because I um, had all my freezeable stuff, the stuff that could freeze inside. So I guess in comparison, 30 bucks a month it cost me to run this and keep the garage at 45 degrees. I think that's very reasonable. I mean, to be completely fair, it probably would have cost me just as much or more to heat this with LP. Um, normally during the winter time, we're talking $1.45 a gallon for LP. Um, I don't contract it because I don't use enough. Um, so really at that rate, when you tag on tank rental, um, unless you want to tie into your house one, which mine, you know, is probably a hundred yards away from the house. And so I probably would have got a separate tank to heat this separate. Um, but looking at that for that, I mean, I'll do some number breakdowns here for you, but really, in my instance, maybe it maybe would have cost saved me ten bucks last month. Is it worth it when our heating season really is from this heater is really running from like basically the end of November till April, March? You know, depends, right? It's going to depend on the year. So you know, your five month heating period. I'm looking at right now our current cost, you know, of one hundred and fifty dollars all winter long if you consider five months to heat the garage. To me, that's pretty affordable. Now, if you want to keep it consistently at 70 degrees or 65 degrees, you're obviously going to see an increase. But for 30 bucks a month, it's not worth the hassle for me to put a, you know, to put a pipe out the roof, run LP, and then put a larger heater in here. Um, and I've already been out here. We're going to have a project coming up. I'm showing you of me installing an attic ladder. That uh, was pretty, you know, easy. It was, you know, 15, 20 degrees outside. I had it 60 degrees in here. That's more than enough for me. It'll heat up to 70, 75, but when I'm working in a sweatshirt, I like to work on a sweatshirt out in the shop. So, you know, really for me, I leave it at 50, 55 most of the times so that I had my, my dad over helping me out, so. All right, I'm gonna take up a few notches so it kicks on. I've noticed when I'm out here, it only runs five minutes about an hour to keep it at 45 degrees, which is nice. So I'm gonna kick it up here a few degrees so it kicks on for you. So go up here, I'm not gonna use the rail. Go ahead and just arrow up here, get a couple of degrees warmer. It'll uh, take a minute to register and then it's going to kick on. Um, while we're waiting, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull up an app I downloaded. It's a decibel meter app. 
Obviously it's not as perfect as it could be on having an actual professional one. But let's see what it does here. So that is right next to the heater. Let's get about six feet away. Pretty quiet, right? Until I start talking. So it's saying it's about as loud as a quiet office. 50 decibels. Pretty cool. I like it. I mean, you're going to have a lot more noise with some of the larger units. Again, in a smaller garage, this works well. Um, it keeps things so you can have a nice conversation with somebody. Um, the larger furnaces, the LP1s, are going to be a little bit louder because you um, have a higher velocity fan motor and such. Um, but I don't think it's anything that, uh, you know, it's going to be a huge issue. But, you know, some people think electric stuff's noisy or may not be noisy. So I want to show you here on this specific heater how loud it is. Let's take a minute, do some uh, pen and paper work, and I'll show you how you could maybe figure out how much it could cost you, depending upon how much this would run. Um, keep in mind, this depends on your local rates, but we're gonna do some basic numbers just to give you an idea how this would work. All right, let's take a look at some numbers. So that garage heater I have is 7,500 watts. That's how much power it does draw. Um, so you're looking at 7,500 watts. We need to take that to kilowatts. So to do that, we take 7,500 divided by 1,000, which results in 7.5 kilowatts. So that's the power consumption um, you could expect per hour from that unit. So take your kilowatts, and you need to find out what your utility rate is. So for the argument and simple math in this situation, we're going to go with, with a, a rate of 10 cents, right? So you look at that, you do the math, that equals 75 cents. And that's going to be per hour of runtime. So for every hour that heater runs, you're looking at 75 cents per hour. Again, looking at this, you have watts. We need to convert to kilowatts. So we've got kilowatts. So here again, we'll look at usage or power draw per hour. Now we're gonna take that times your utility rate. And that's gonna give you your cost per hour to run, All right? Pretty basic math here, just do some conversions. So like we said here, 75 cents per hour is what's gonna cost you to run that. Assuming it's running on high, um, you know, like I said, this eco model goes back between high and low, and it helps to moderate that power band and use less power if needed. So, I mean, being really transparent here, I think using that 5,000 watt um, uh, value on mine would be more accurate because when I've been out there working, when it's actually at operating temperature within the building, it cycles every, you know, it cycles about five or 10 minutes an hour on low. So you're looking at, in that instance, 50 cents per hour. And uh, you do the math on that, that kind of gets you there. So, so for the sake of the argument here, I said my bill last month was $30 more than I, I would historically see. So $30 a day, we're gonna divide by 30 days. That's gonna cost me about a dollar a day, right? So pretty easy math there. So we're gonna figure how many hours a day that machine is running as again, pretty easy. Let's just assume we're running it at 5,000 watts again. So 5,000 watts, we'll divide that by 1,000 to get us to kilowatts. So we'll be at 50, or sorry, 5.0 kilowatts at 10 cents an hour, just for the sake of the argument and making things easy math. That gets us at 50 cents per hour. Pretty easy math. Well, again, you can look here and see, well, it's costing us 50 cents an hour. I'm gonna cost us about a dollar a day. Well, one divided by, you know, a dollar divided by 50, you're looking at 50 cents. You're looking at, you know, two hours runtime. So again, does that seem right? Let's, let's just kind of think about that again. I said it runs five minutes every, you know, every 
24 hours, or sorry, it runs five minutes every hour, 24 hours in a day. So we'll say five times 24. You're looking at 120 minutes divided by 60 minutes an hour, two hours of run time. Sounds fair, right? I mean, based upon what I've seen, it makes sense. So this calculation does make sense, does work. Um, again, these numbers are going to change a little bit depending upon your heater usage and the number of your utilities you're using, but this will get you there um, and it'll tell you what you could expect it to cost per hour of runtime. Again, the more it runs, the more it's going to cost and it's going to be less efficient, less effective. Um, keeping in mind here too, so if I run around LP, um, and LP in the wintertime is around $1.40 a gallon um, and I think there's around... Um, 92,000 BTU available in one gallon of LP. And uh, let's say I'm using, uh, we'll make this easier math. We'll just say there's 90,000 BTU in a gallon of LP. And we'll say I'm using a 45,000 BTU furnace out there. So looking at that again, that is how much um, the furnace creates now. That's how much it's gonna it's gonna use. So when we knowing that you can get ninety thousand of BTU out of out of one gallon of LP, you're gonna basically take um, it's every hour of burn time is gonna burn forty five um, thousand BTU. So that's a half a gallon. Per hour. Again, looking at this. We know our, our run time of two hours a day um, and say we do run, you know, uh, we run, say we do run the same amount of time in two hours. So two hours, um, you're looking at one gallon a day. Here again, this is where numbers kind of get tricky. And you may, it may or may, may or may not run more or less. I'm going to assume it's going to run very similar to the electric heater just because um, you're looking at amount of usage. Um, so one gallon of LP a day um, at a rate of $1.40. Well, so that gives you a cost of a daily cost of $1.40. So if you look at this here, again, math's not perfect. You can look on the interweb. It's going to give you different numbers you can use. I, I think it's around 92,000 BTU is available per one gallon of LP. This gets you there though. So long story short, it just depends on your application. Um, it's going to cost you $1.40 a day if your LP is at $1.40 to heat that garage, right? And if you're running electric right now, it's costing me about a dollar a day. So really you're looking at 40 cents, um, give or take, right? If we're looking at this 40 cents, at 30, 30 days, it could be $12, could be $12 more expensive to run an LP heater, which is kind of why I got to where I'm at with a uh, electric heater in my garage, because I don't have to worry about tank rental and many of those other things I talked about previously. So this just kind of gives you an idea um, of what you could expect um, to, to deal with and, and maybe uh, how you could get some of these numbers yourself. Again, this is all public domain information. You can look it up on the internet yourself and look. But I kind of want to give you a rundown to why I decided to do what I did. And, even, and honestly, even if it cost me $15 more a month to run electric, I probably still would have done it just from the ease of installation. And I don't have to worry about other things within the garage um, and the hassle of running gas lines and such. So hope you find that helpful. If you guys liked what you saw today, give me that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button so you can see more videos in the future. And until next time, I'll see ya.